I'm on. I am on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. All right. And my computer's on. All right. That was good. It was saying trying to connect. And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, and I don't really know that I would need um, this, honestly, this morning to share what I want to share this morning. Um, we're going to, today's a special day, Baptism Sunday, uh, special, um, because we have people declaring Jesus as Lord of their lives. And uh, that's, that's just uh, probably one of the most exciting things uh, that we ever get to do is just to see somebody give their heart to Jesus, give their life to Jesus. And I want to make that clear that when you give your heart to Jesus, you're giving your life to Jesus. And um, as I don't even know why I kind of feel a little teary. Um, I think it's because of this 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 week it took this week's and this weekend's message um, was deliberated over for uh, probably two months. Two months to figure out where I'm going to go right after Easter. And how many of you know in two months there can be a lot of things that go on? As a pastor, um, which is a shepherd, uh, you know, Paul, he was, an, he was a, an apostle, a sent one, but he was, in a sense, a pastor that would start a church and is still a pastor and then go to another church and do the same thing over and over. So he, he carried this pastor's heart. But he was a sent one, this an apostle, this one that would. And so you see, this is where you see these letters to churches, you know, the epistles. And, um, and so as we were, as I was getting ready uh, to, to, to minister, I, I just was sensing so strong in my heart, like what do you, in this span, span of these last two months, there were so many things going on uh, it, it, that, that whether it was be coming into uh, getting a phone call. Or having someone come to your house, or or whatever it might be, or sitting in a counseling session, or or having this. Did you hear that this is going on in their life? And did you hear this? And 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 as a, as a pastor, sometimes those things can be heavy. Everything from marriages, from friends, from marriages, friends that you're like, where 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 are they at? Like with Jesus, they're like not. And so your heart just breaks from you, like you reach for them, you know. You but yet to no avail. You have uh, words come uh, about uh, people leaving, maybe leaving faith or, or being offended and hating, hating his people in the church and being done with God. You have, you have marriages that are just, uh, uh, I, I don't love you anymore. You have uh, ch- children that are news that the children's like deuces. I mean, just, okay, so I've heard a lot. And so as you're coming in to minister to something, I don't want to minister something for this, for an applause. And then at the same time, uh, you're hearing these bad reports, you hear the opposite effect of like, uh, of how right I am and how righteous I am, you know, and, how, and like how we, we have this, this uh, place of pride where we stand in, we know what God says. And we're right instead of God's right. That's, that can very easily get into the church. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. No, 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 no. The only revelation you have is what God has shown. So you, didn't, you owe nothing. Okay. So, so there's just like all this just, Lord, what do you want to say? 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 And, and right after Easter, typically, wow, well, look at the house is full. Praise the Lord. We're coming into summer when the house won't be. But guess what? It'll come back. We'll hit August. You know, when we kind of get back into our thing where what's important is important. And I'm not saying vacations aren't important. Okay. And I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about coming to the building. I'm talking about being the church. All what I'm talking about is I'm talking about this morning about what, what now that we're full and I have this, here's what I, genuinely in my heart, I have this moment. This is how I think. There's this moment, and I really probably should change my prayer, and to change my prayer to ask for God to move culture. But I have this, 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 just same way tithes and offerings, if you were to look at giving over the last 10 years trends, you would see that um, you, giving goes down in December because Christmas time, and my, 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 that's when I buy presents for my kids, right? 
So giving goes trends down. But then after the beginning of the new year, January, it begins to start to trend up. And when tax season comes, which is March, typically it trends up. This year it didn't trend up, but typically it trends up. And then when you hit about May, it trends down because we're coming into summer. And that's vacation time. That's when we spend our money on vacation. And then you go to the next part, and then it goes back up, probably like not as big, but, you know, maybe August, end of August, after Labor Day, right? Um, that's when it goes up for a, about a month and a half, and then it drops back down to December. So there's this, the, and, and so the, the giving is, uh, correlates to both the events of the year, whether it's Christmas, summer vacations, or, or tax season, but it also, uh, it's, uh, to some degree, is the, um, the, the moment of people are, that are in the, ch- in the church. And when you remind people about Christ, Easter, Christmas, right? It's kind of like, oh yeah, God is here. Like, oh yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I probably should do something about that. And I'm not talking to, to just, just, this is not a condemnation message. This is what I'm ta- telling you is the deliberation of, of my heart. Being deliberate, like in this moment from Easter, depending on how late Easter hits in April and how early gradu- you know, graduation's coming up. So May's crazy, right? Because everyone's getting out of school. May's crazy. Like you can't really, so, so we have this April three-week window. When, I, when, when the word has the greatest chance of hitting the most hearts. Weighty for me. I can't change your will. Here's the thing that we're going to talk about today. I'm not talking, you know, God never stumbled or struggled with addressing sin. The only thing he ever struggles to address is an unwilling heart. Your sin, my sin, he never had a problem with. He made a way for that. You know what he can't make a way for? My unwillingness. Because that's my choice. So I was thinking... Lord, what do you want to say? What do you want me? What do you want to teach on? What do you want to talk about? What? Where? This is this is genuinely how I, I, we come up into what what's next. I have stacks of notebooks. I have gobs of Google drives, but I, I haven't been able to go back to those. I can't tell you that's just kind of. Sometimes I'm like, Lord, was that not good? No, it's just not now. Okay, so what do you want to say? And this is this is what I what I heard. Um, They don't need another message. We live in maybe the Bible Belt. If you, where you maybe have heard the message of Christ, maybe you're here today and you never have. But you'll hear it today. But there's a lot of things that we know we just don't do. Um, or we say, I will when, which is the same as saying, I won't. I will when is, is I will when that becomes a priority. I have a, I have a, a video here. I want you to see this, this little video. Uh, I think it's important that we, we address this video. Um, hey, on the end, Chandavong, will you just kink that hose? So this, uh, just hold that hose in, in the shape of a kink. Sit on your chair and stay there. Here, just grab it. Sorry, it's running cold water into there. We want to make sure everybody's comfortable and it's going to overflow otherwise. So, yeah, kink that, will you? Oh, actually, I could do that. Hold on, unkink it. Are you unkinked? Oh, cool. Okay. This is going to be an overflow today. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> legit, probably. All right. Maybe get a couple of five-gallon buckets. <laughs> well, where were we at? The video. <laughs> Hit that video. Have you ever seen Mission Impossible? What does this represent? Time. 
You know, we're in the church, oh, age. I love the church age. You know why I love the church age? Because it's this age when God's dealing with the church. When God's dealing with people according to this time where he sent his son Jesus and Jesus paid the price. And you know what? Because Jesus paid the price, we can come boldly. And you know what? There's comfort in can. But there's deception in delay. And we are in the church age. But the reality is, it's coming. How? It's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. What's coming to an end? Time. Time for what? When you can come. You, here's the thing. You can come until you can't. And you know, the fact of the matter is, you can't come whenever you want. Because the Bible tells us that only you come and only people come when the Lord is drawing. So when he's drawing, you know, the response should be yes. It shouldn't be, ah, you know, I got this thing to do. I will win. See, because, see, I will win, that's an excuse. And, there, you know, every, that, or let me just say this, because excuse sounds bad. That's a reason. I got a reason. You got a reason, I got a reason. I got a reason, not just, we're not talking, I want you to hear this clearly, I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm talking about when the word of God comes to us. What am I doing with the word of God when it comes to me? When it comes to me about forgiveness, what am I doing? And I'm not saying you're not going to miss it and I'm not going to miss it, but what's my heart? God can deal with my sin as long as he has my heart. As long as I say, Lord, I want what you want, even when I miss it, my heart, my heart condemns me. My heart says, I'm guilty. God, I call on. I think we hear this comfort of can. I can come boldly to the throne of grace, Hebrews. I can come boldly. I can come. I can come. I can come. I can come. Here's the thing. I can come until I can't. You fool. You, tonight your life is required of you. Who's then? This is talking about things. Who's, who's building and laying up barns? He said, you fool. You're, tonight your life is required of you. Who then will these things be? He couldn't make any more decisions. Decision time was over. Does that produce fear? I hope not because it's truth. I hope not. Because it shouldn't produce fear. See, a warning, a warning sign doesn't produce fear unless I'm unwilling to yield to it. Uh, 500 foot cliff right there. <laughs> well, yeah, you better get scared. But warning signs don't, they actually, what they do is they produce peace. There's a scripture, I don't have the reference, just talking from my heart at, at the, this moment from this morning. Uh, it tells us that, uh, I think it's in the Psalms, it says that your boundaries fell for me in pleasant places. We, we taught a whole series on this. Uh, last year, me and Pastor Evan together, we talked together on how he, our, his boundaries, God's laws, they fell, they fell for me in pleasant places. They kept me in pleasantness, in, in, in life. His words are life. And, and so what, what, I, what I felt so impressed was not to bring another message, but to address your and my comfort. And it's the comfort of can. And you know, I thought it would be really great. Actually, I didn't really think about water baptism Sunday being this day. But you're lucky. You came to visit and you're going to get more than just the comfort of can. You're going to have to address your will. I'm going to have to address my will. Here's the cool thing is though. With, when I address my will, God brings me. He's bring, there's a flow. And, and there's this flow. Like legitimately, this flow that... Oh, I guess it got shut. Oh, that was pretty good. What happened? Somebody shut it off. Hello. 
This is, this is what I was going to show you. Well, this is an analogy that's not working so good at the moment. <laughs> we'll see. It's not on. But let's see if anybody... <laughs> hey, hey, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. That right there? Sometimes, all of a sudden, there was fear there, but the water wasn't on. You know, you know where I was reading this week? I was reading this week, and, and I was flipping over to this week's Bible reading, okay, where we're reading together, in New Testament, and, uh, and I was on my way there, I hit Zephaniah. And I was like, keep reading, because I don't want to read that. And I felt so impressed to go back to that and read that. I want to tell you something. Okay, I'm going to go back and you're going to, I'm going to read it. And I get to verse 12. And this is Zephaniah 1.12. And it says, um, I'm coming for you. This is, a, this is, now you got to remember, these are the Old Testament prophets or the Old Testament mouthpieces to the children of Israel. And they would bring God's word of direction, correction, empowerment, like, Right? And there, this is, Zephaniah is speaking about some, some correction, and not only just correction, but now judgment, because they were unwilling to yield. And this is what he says, I'm coming for you, and I'm going to search you, Jerusalem, with candles, with a lamp. In other words, I'm going to go to the dark places, because you said, and you, could, you can let, uh, put that up, Zephaniah 1.12, you said, we said, God will do nothing, good or bad. You know what that's called? complacency. Doesn't matter. I mean, I can point the hose at you, you know. Why? Have you ever dealt with a, a black and a white wire? Right? This is how we, we God's all powerful. He's just not on. God's all powerful. He's just not on. God's speaking to me. This is his word, but that's about all it does. It's almost like a drip. It's kind of an annoyance to hear something that I don't want to hear. But the fact of the matter is, when God speaks something to us, there's a flow. Oh, let's turn it to Jet. There's a flow in my life. And this is what he's trying to get to me and to you. A flow. So I can, if I can or if I will do his word, this is what gets to happen. Okay? But I can also, I can also choose to, instead of do the word, I can choose to what? I can choose to what? I can choose to not do the word? It's on. Guys, it's on. It is on. I, it is on. All the power of God is on right now. The power of God is on right now. I'm just not. I'm just not to heal my marriage, to cause love towards you again, to forgive. I'm just unwilling. I'm just not. Hmm. This right here, this not, is what needs to be addressed. It's not a message. You got enough message, you got enough word, you can turn that off. You got enough message. You got enough word. I got enough message. I got enough word. I don't need it anymore. You know what I need? I need to address my knots. Where I'm not willing to do something. I'm not willing to yield. I'm not willing to come. Because I have a reason. And you know, everybody's reason is good to them. The problem is it's cutting off the flow. To your life. And to all those it's supposed to be going to. And you wonder why your, our, your life or my life becomes dry. And you know the thing about it is, after a good rain and a good soaking, everything's great for a while. 
And we go through life like, like unaware that God is, and the, the timer is still going off. Look at this. You saw this, Zephaniah 1, so you can see what I'm saying. He said, to punish those who sit complacent in their sins. You know what sin means? To miss the mark. And they say, eh, whatever. Whatever. They think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. It's like, God, we were just singing this morning, all powerful. Go ahead, you can just let the screensaver be that countdown today. I don't know if it's still playing or rolling. I don't know if it might re restart. The thing is, is the restart doesn't happen. <laughs> the time is running. Now you always, God, God will get, his mercies are new every day, but the, uh, the span of time isn't a restart. It's, it's not. Like, we're getting close. Matter of fact, if you go to Revelation chapter 22, the very end of the book, you know what he says? Go ahead and get put up the Revelation where I gave you those, uh, those scriptures. Revelation 22, I think it's maybe uh, 15 to 23, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, we're, it's, um, we'll wait. It says, coming soon. It's not, and it's not like those stores that say, closing soon. That's how we think God's soon is. It's coming soon, never. I'm just saying that to get you to buy something. That's, that's, not, that's not what the Lord says. I'll, I'll give you the, the actual reference. It's at the, the, it'll be at the very end, Revelation chapter tw or 22, and you can look it up. Yeah. Computer's trying to connect. It's on your... Thank you. Have hand me my phone. My phone will work. Uh, hey, how'd you? That's awesome. You got it on the Google Drive. Look at you. He's got my notes. All right. Revelation chapter twenty-two, verse twelve. Behold, I'm coming soon. In other words, look. Time's running out. My reward is with me to give to each one of you according to what he has done. And I am the Alpha and the Omega. I thought it wasn't about what you do. Your reward is the first and the last, the end and the beginning. Verse 14, blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to eat at the tree of life and may enter the city of the gates. But outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give to you this testimony for the churches. I love this book. He's writing to the churches, Jesus. You know, Jesus is the chief shepherd whose heart is so for the churches. His heart is like where he says in, uh, I think, Matthew 23, he says, How many times, Jerusalem, would I have gathered you to my, under my wings as a hen gathers her, her, her chicks? But you, but you would, would not. But you were unwilling how many times can you, in that in the, the language there is just one of heartbreak. You know where Jesus went first to his hometown when, when the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And now the, it was, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Now he was now at that moment been on the earth for 30 years. And now at that moment he was released to do what he was come to do. Because the Spirit of the Lord was no longer just within him. It was upon him to be a witness and to testify. And he goes to his hometown first. Where, where aunt and uncle and Betty and I, like, where, where he, he went there and he could do very little because of the dishonor. But here, Jerusalem, his, his home, his own people, the, the apple of God's eye, these people that God's chosen people from Abraham. How many times I would have gathered you, I desired to, I came to you first, I came first to Israel, and you would not. I, Jesus, have sent my, my angel to give you this test and to testify to the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Verse 17, the spirit and the bride says, come, come, come. Let the one who hears say, come. This is important. So Jesus isn't just saying, come. Who else is supposed to say, Come. Listen, you can't say come if you didn't go. You can't say come if you're not on your way. 
I think about the church. I think a reason, the only reason the church, the, the, the greatest gift, the, the, the truth of Jesus the, is ever in decline is because the church is not coming where they say they're going. Or you understand what I'm saying. They're not going where they say they're coming. And so they're no, they can't say come to anybody else because they don't look, they're not going that way. It's like Matthew 5. You are the salt of the earth, the light of the world, the city on a hill, right? Like it talks about salt, then it goes into light. And, and the la- salt of the earth, um, where it, but if the salt loses its flavor, then you're good for nothing, right? But then it says you're the light of the world. A light of the world, a city on a hill. A lamp that which cannot be hidden. He says, who of you lights a lamp and, 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 and puts it under a bushel? No, they put it on a lampstand. So that what? It can give light to everyone around. Is that right? So a lampstand is pretty important. It's what enables you and I to see, but not just you and I to see, but others to see. We're going to get to that here in a moment. Come, he says, let the one who hears come. This is verse 17 of 22, Revelation. That's like... Uh, I felt like I was talking in third person there. And let the one who is thirsty come. So you heard him say come. He says, now you that hear to heard him say come, say come. And then he says, if you're thirsty, if you find yourself looking, longing. And this is why the first world countries, the message of the gospel, we're not thirsty because we can get our own. Just go turn the faucet on. N- nobody here has thought about a well. I'm good. I'm comfortable. See, this is the comfort in can. Oh, I can just go get a drink. I can, oh, I can just, I can. There's a comforting, I can. And so when there's such comfort in can, what happens is because I can, often there's a delay. There's a delay. And that delay is, has produced deception to where we don't realize how hot or cold, no, We're just warm. Yeah, we've been about your comfort. I mean, I'm glad we're baptizing in warm water. Because i got to stick my hands in there. But the reality is, what am I doing with what the Lord has said? What does my life look like? It's time that we address our will. Our will. Because this is the only thing, and, that, and I realized why this is my, my heart was breaking for this, is because I could sit and I could talk to somebody about something, and I could give them the word that will bring life, and it's a lamp and a light, and it shines ahead. But I don't want to. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. You know what? We're going to work on our family after baseball season's done. That's what we're going to do. Because right now we got prior commitments. We're, we're going to work on my family after hunting season's done. We're gonna, I'll work on my marriage after I'm done with deer season because I got this, all these things scheduled. Um, buddy, you won't have a marriage after deer season. I'll get hungry. No, 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 because no, that's the thing. You can until you can't. And when, when can't you? That's all right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 2, 1 through 5. The angel of the Lord <coughs> says, <coughs> says this. In, um, these are the words of him. He actually says this, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? So John is writing to the pastor. The angel is the messenger. And the angel is the, is the pastor of this church. This is what, it, hey. Oh, wait. I, I don't know. No, I'm not a chicken, but I am a messenger. He said to the angel... Of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars. The seven stars are the seven lights. The seven lights that are about to be written to are the seven churches. The churches are to be light. The church is to be light. 
And he says, I, then these are the words of him who holds the church, who holds the seven lights in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. Like in other words, who's gave them the influence, the influence to, 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 to be a light and to be a testimony of his goodness. You want goodness in your life? Like that was, that's God's, the Bible tells us it's his goodness that draws men to repentance. Goodness in your and my life, in my marriage, in my family, and everywhere is because God has given me a lampstand. It's his influence to the light that he's birthed in me. There's this lampstand that's enabling that, and he's the one. Let's keep going here. He says, I know your deeds and your labor. And you're, pr- pr- and I, hey, I thought I saw you there from awake, and I was like, hey, what's up? Anyway. Anyway, I was going to say hi earlier. But it's okay to do that. I know your deeds, your labor, and your perseverance. You know, so he's, he's commending this church. I know that you can't tolerate those who are evil, and you've tested and exposed as liars those who falsely claim to be apostles. Without growing weary, you have pers- persevered and endured many things for the sake of my name. But I have this against you. You have abandoned, uh, you have abandoned your first love. You've abandoned your first love. Therefore, keep in mind how far have you fallen. Repent and perform the deeds you did at first. But if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Now, he's not saying if you don't repent, you lose your salvation. He's talking about the influence. He's talking about the goodness that which you're to be drawing other people the goodness that you yourself are to be living by and walking by and ordaining by. You know that unwilling to repent, you won't be able to figure it out because the very thing that you're supposed to be able to walk in your life and make right decisions by, you just kicked that over and bushled that. Wow. You're telling me that my unwillingness could cause me, though I'm saved, if I've given my, to walk in darkness and not have the privilege to carry and, and, and the goodness of God to be in my life? Absolutely, right there. So how do I get, how do I get back to, how do I get back to the doing the things I first did? How do I, I left my first love? So many times we, it's simply this, order. Do the things you once did, let me, this, uh, that you did at first. It doesn't just mean the things that you just did, one, two, three. It means do the things you did, when you, the things you once held in proper order. To do it first, you have to, it has to be back in proper order. And there's a lot of things in our lives that are out of order. But he says, if it, do again the things, go, go back to what is, get, get the first things back first in our lives. What's first? What should be first and what is first? I was talking uh, to Brad uh, this week up in the sound booth. He was getting some things ready for Sunday. And we were talking, uh, I was talking about this, this Sunday and, and what I had in my heart. And, and he's like, yeah, I remember my pastor, he said this uh, one time uh, years ago. He said, why don't you just say, um, instead of saying, I'll try, why don't you just say, um, yeah, I, I don't want to be there. <laughs> or I won't be there. Because it sounds a lot different than versus I'll try, because that's deceptive, isn't it? Just tell, tell yourself the truth so that you can actually walk free. Because a lot of times there's this, oh, I will when they, I, I'm deceived into thinking I am. I will when I am. I'm not. And the time is coming to an end. I'm not just talking about eternity. I'm talking about time for restoration of that relationship, that marriage. I'm talking about time, a space of repentance. He said, but if not, you'll, you'll, um, I'll take that, that lampstand from its place. Philippians 2 12 through 16. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more so in my absence. Again, this is the Paul writing to the church at Philippi, or the, we call the book of Philippians. He says, 
he says, just as you've always obeyed, not only in, in my presence, but now even more so absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So there's got to be this reverential awe, like, well, I don't know where the hose is, but you know how everybody went, ha oh, from a hose, y'all. From a hose. Ha! Ah! When the word of God is spoken, are we like, oh, are we like, La Fiesta El Trio, that's the decision. I thought I was just coming to baptize. My, my church is out in this long. I don't know. And, and you know, sometimes you say, say the truth like that, and then it's like, well, that's rude. <laughs> no, 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 that's the warning sign. That's the warning sign. He said, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God, for it is God who is at work in you to will and to act or to will and to do on behalf of his good purpose. So God is giving you the will to, and the grace to will and to do according to his pleasure. He's given it there. He's, it's there. It's there. All I have to do is do what? James 1, 22. Do. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving myself. All of it's right there. When he comes with the word, I, I, I just need to say, I, I will. I will. Just, just the surrendering of I will. God can take care of your missing. God can take care of your, 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 your mess ups. God can take care of the sin. But you have to take care of your will. God can take care of the mess. God can redeem and restore and what the, what the worms had eaten and all, he can put back, but he has to have somebody say, what do you say? And you say, I say what you say. I will, I will what you will. He says, now he says this, and this is, this is getting back to the things in the first, in the right order. Verse 14, he says, do everything without complaining and arguing, or you've heard, and grumbling. Have you ever read some of the scripture and you're like, okay, so he's telling me how to walk out my salvation and do what God's telling me to do. And now he says, don't argue and don't murmur so that you may be blameless and pure. Oh, yeah, because everybody hates people griping. This is not talking about griping here. It's not talking about arguing. Let's, talk, let's, let's just pull, the, pull these apart just real quick. This complaining uh, or, or, or murmuring and arguing. So, yeah, it's important. He says, now, what the word of the, when the word comes to you, he's giving you the grace to will and to do according to his good pleasure. But when you hear it, don't murmur about it. Hello? When, when you sit in church, when you read your Bible and you see something, yeah, Sometimes it's murmuring, and then you go out in the car. Well, what did you think about? A lot of times it doesn't even have that conversation to husband and wife because sharpening one another would happen, and then we, you would, you and I would, we just kind of keep it to ourselves. We just kind of talk ourselves right out of it. Murmur. Isn't that what happened to the children of Israel? They talked themselves right out of the promise, right out of the hose. Okay, he says, do everything. Do he said, do without complaining or murmuring or displeasure. See, that's, that's the thing about when God comes to us and, he, and it's his word. There's this, there's this, his boundaries fell for me in pleasant places. When I murmur, it's because it's displeasing to me. Because I see a different way. Even though God sees a whole lot higher way. We see like this, he sees, Okay. He says, now, or arguing. So now this is, one, this is the one that, to me, is so, so, so important, this arguing. This, this, this word, ar arguing, is, I have that slide, and I want you to see it. This is this word, um, diaglo it's the one that uh, we put up very last today. It's dialogoismos, logoismos. Do everything without complaining, murmuring, or arguing, is how it's translated in our English, or it's this word. Reasoning that is self-based. This is the, the Greek definition. Because, see, one word translated word for word, Greek to English, we got 
This word to argue, but to explain the Greek word, we need sentences. Okay? So, reasoning that is self-based and therefore confused. Do everything without reasoning that is self-based and therefore confused. So when I hear the word of God and he tells me this, yeah, I don't know about that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reason, yeah, I mean, what do you think, honey? Okay, yeah. Especially as it contributes to the reinforcing, uh, to reinforcing others in discussion to remain in their initial prejudice or the initial decision. He's this, this without arguing. So he's telling us this, that when you're, when you're doing the word, when you, when you hear a mess, the message of the word, when grace comes to you to will and to do, don't do it where it's displeasing and don't do it where you talk with one another. Do you really, do we really want to do this? I mean, I know we once did this. I know we used to, I know we once went to church every Sunday. I know it once was worship. Now it's duty. I, I know that I, I'm just so busy. So the one thing that's going to go first is where he tells us as you see the day approaching and you need strength and you need someone else to watch your back and you need somebody you know fight for you and stand in agreement for you the place where he says to assemble I don't care if it's in a church building or wherever it is underneath the gifts that God has given to equip the saints for the work of the ministry we we well yeah you know that, that this is the time we go do this here's one for you you know our offering confession? Direct our lives into a place of overflow? This right here? This could be directed into a place of overflow. You know what that took? A little bit of an adjustment. You know what this is called? Lack. Add, just, add, just add a little bit more. A place of overflow. This is a place of overflow. Did I just get directed into a place of overflow? Nope. Looks like I'm missing about 400 bottles. That's all right. It's just electric. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn that off. It's, it's pretty hot in there. Anyway. Sorry, We're, one of these days we're just going to take that out before worship, then we won't have to worry about getting electrocuted, right? <laughs> oh, Lord. What do we want to do? Argue? You know what? It really, it's 2023. God didn't know the end from the beginning. There is an end. There was a beginning. But God doesn't know what I know. I started somewhere along the way, late in the game. The term implies one confused mind interacting with another confused mind. Arguing about what God says. In other words, do I really have to come under this word? Each further reinforcing the original what? Confusion. A deliberate question about what is true. Questioning what's true. Doesn't that sound demonic? Doesn't that sound like back in the garden? It does, doesn't it? Totally sounds like that. This same word right here, this word arguing, go back, uh, is the same word that you find in Luke 24 when Jesus comes into the room after being raised from the dead and he's making a visitation and he walks into the room and he says to the disciples, why? Why are you doubting and arguing within yourself? Look, the evidence has come. Do you have any fish? Give me a piece of fish. I'll show you that I'm raised from the dead. They were doubting the very, though truth came to them and stood in their midst and had holes in his hands. They wouldn't believe when they saw the hands. They wouldn't believe when they saw the side. They wouldn't believe. He said, you got a piece of fish? Give me a piece of fish so you can see I can eat. This is not a spirit. 
oh, that was just me, you know, in, in some a spiritual and heightened, uh, you know, in heightened, lightened moment when I was going through a hard time, when I made the decision that I was going to follow God. No, honey, that was when truth came to you. That was when truth came and you made a decision and you've been talked out of it. You made a decision to follow Christ and not just give your heart, but to give your life. You did. You made a decision. I made a decision. I, and you know what? I'm going to continue to make a decision. Because it's my decision to make. He made a way so I can come. Will I? Will you? Will you? That's, that's, will you? That was, uh, t- today's, co- the, the, the title of this morning's message was The Comfort of a Can. Or, and then I was like, oh, that'll work, that'll work. And I was like, well, I got like three other titles. <laughs> will, will you? Will you? It goes on to say this in that same passage um, <clears throat> of Philippians where we find this arguing, do everything without planning and murmuring. And he says this, and I wanted to finish this passage, so that you will be blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a crooked and perverse generation which, in which you shine as lights to the world as you hold forth the word of life. You and me holding forth the word of life, we're to be shining like stars in this world, but it's going to take you and me doing the word without complaining, uh, grumbling, uh, without arguing, without re- digressing or regress or going, retreating back from what the things and the, that I once took as truth. It's going to take me addressing my will and saying yes to what God says yes to and no to what God says no to and make an adjustment. And when I said, oh, I committed to this, I gave my word on this, but he gave you his word on this. But I gave my word on this, but he gave you his word on this. But, but I gave my word, but he gave you his word on this, but I get, but, but I'm going to go, I'm going to do what God's, I'm going to take God's word. Okay. Good. Cause the hose is on. So expect, expect the light to shine and goodness to flow and follow and not only into your life, but into others life and, and, and let fulfillment be found. You know how many times we cannot do so? We can't do, I, I got to go do this. I'm going to see a piece of land. I'm going to go check my oxen. I just got married or whatever. I can't go to the dinner. You know what we're chasing is fulfillment. But the fulfillment has always been found in what we were created for. And that is to be this light to the world. And it comes by you and me holding to the truth. Not my truth. His truth. And this is, verse 16 is where I had felt. And I, I, I so identified with Paul. He said that, I would, that when I come to you, he said, as you hold forth the word of life, in order that I, I may boast on the day of Christ and not run my labor in vain. That's how I genuinely was like, Lord, I sat on this phone call. I went here. I did that. This is <laughs> That's a place that Paul was in. And he encouraged them to do what? To take a hold of the grace of God, which is the word of God, and acknowledge it as this is what I need. This word is what I need. When I'm thirsty, when I'm hungry, when I'm satisfied, when I'm broken, when, whenever, wherever I'm at, this is what I need. And you can. And you can. You've been released. You have the ability to. You can. And there is comfort in the fact that you can. And you can come at any moment, at any time, if you will. 
And this is why this, this message is not just a message of hard. It's not a message, it's not a, a re- message of rebuke. It's a message of a father that says, listen, this is how. Make, just, just say yes. Just say yes. When he's drawing, just say yes. Yeah, I had this piece of land I was going to go see, but you're in, you called? I'm going to make an adjustment. We were talking about that this week. Like, like how many times do you, we, we, were, we got uh, team night coming up, okay? Team night is something, that all of our serve team, it's our annual time where we get to talk to our whole team at one time and just celebrate and honor them. And, you know, so you always get these, like, RSV, RSVP, so we know what to plan for, right? And so you get these yeses and you get these noes, right? So we say RSVP, and I think it's like 180-something yeses to like eight noes because there's things going on in, this, in, in, in our lives, and I, and I get that. And, I, and they, it, maybe we're late coming to the game to get the message out. But uh, this conversation came about, about just like, okay, do I go golfing or do I go to dinner at grandma's? Right? Well, it depends on what you view as more important. Right? Do I, do I go to the ball game this weekend or do I go to church? Depends on what I view more important, especially when it's habitually. Right? Do I, do I go to do? And so we were just talking about Value, esteem value, and how, how really where I place my value is how I make my decisions. It's that simple. And so the blood of Christ that made a way, do you know how valuable that is? I don't know if we do. Because it's like grandma cooking dumplings, but you got a steak dinner and you're going to go hang out with your friends, but you got to come right now. What are you going to do? You got to wait for dumplings or you got to, like in this day and age, oh, sorry, grandma, I can't come. Uh, No, 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 no. Change. Somebody tell me. It's not, I can't come. I won't come. No, I can't come. No, I won't come. So when the Lord's dealing with you, This is what I'd ask. Replace that to just can, from can to will, that I'm making a choice. When when the Lord says, you need to go to them because you have offense in your heart, instead of saying, no, just say, I won't. Or instead of saying, well, when they come to me, in other words, that we're, we're working towards an end. No, 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 no. Well, how did God say to do it? He said, you go. Okay, so guess what I need to say? Either I will or I won't. Hey, when he tells us, to, in the, when he tells us about giving, either just when you sit in, and you come to church and, and, and it's time to give and recognize that every good gift came to him, just tell him, Lord, I, I would like to, but I don't want to. I mean, either my want to or my not want to is greater. That's what the reality is. Let's talk, talk about, let's talk about um, uh, uh, going to my child when I, when I messed up. Anybody? Else? And the Lord's like, um, go to them, right? Don't cause your son or your, your child to be in a place of resentment. Don't cause, that's not just talking about children or, you know, fathers don't cause, you know, your children to be resentful by pushing them down when they're like one years old. You know how it's kind of fun to watch them like fall over and get up, you know, don't provoke your children to anger. You know, this is the scripture in Ephesians. Don't provoke your children to anger. It's not talking about the two year old. It's kind of fun. You know, dads do this, right? And they like to have fun and poking them. It's talking about being hard on your kids or doing something that, you know, the Holy Spirit checked you on, you need to go make that right. Don't provoke them. To, don't continue on. And when he says, stop, stop, stop. And then if you go make it right. That's all. Let's make it right. That's what my heart was saying. God, I want it right with finances. I want it right in marriages. I want it right in families. I want it right with this daughter and that mother and that father. I want it right with these friends. I want it right. 
And they would just, I'm appealing to your will this morning based on the word of God. I'm appealing to your will. I'm also appealing to your will for the decision for Christ. Maybe you're here this morning and like, and I don't want this to be some rote thing, but like you, you're here maybe watching somebody else, but God's saying, I'm dealing with you. I came, I'm coming to you today. Well, what will you decide? This is, this is your choice. Jesus made a way so you can come. He took the sin. He took all of your sins, all of your mine, yours, the world's sin upon him as punishment and payment. He made a way for us to come. Will you? This is this invitation. It's not just here in this, this audience. It's online. It's, it's every... Will you come to Jesus? Will you trust him over yourself? Will you? It's your choice. It's your choice. Invitations are given. Just like when Jesus gave an invitation to the banquet. Will you come? Will you come? We're going to do baptism here in a moment. Uh, Pastor Austin, if you want to start coming, uh, or you can come, just making you aware. But before we do that, if you've never met Jesus, or you're making that decision today, I want to give my my life to Jesus. I, can we stand for a second? Because I, I know that there's a whole lot more here than um, where there's a lot of will. There's a lot of decisions that are needing to be made, adjustments um, with your family, with within marriages, uh, within what you're doing with your time late at night. There, there's all kinds of things that are decisions that are to be made. Um, and so I, I, I want to take this time to uh, extend an invitation to Christ, but I also want to take this time while we're doing this for you to uh, release your will with the words of your mouth. This is why the Bible tells us that you believe in your heart, but you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, that my will, yes or no, it, my will is released with my, my words. So release your will today, this morning, concerning those things that the Lord was dealing with you on while, 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 we, while we're in this moment of prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just do that, and then we'll, then we'll give an invitation to Christ. Father, we come to you right now, and we just say thank you for your word. They, your words are life to us. There's a flow when we hear from you. Father, we, we today, we, we, we say we will un, uh, we're asking for, uh, we're making a decision to, to undo the knot and just simply go with what you say. We will we, thank you for the grace, uh, the, the will, the ability to will and to do what you say. It's not a hard thing. It's not an annoying thing. It's a delightful thing. It's a place of overflow. It's a place of flow. It's a place of increase. It's a place of restoration. It's a place of joy. It's a place of what my heart longed for. It's a place of fulfillment. It's, it's your words to me. It satisfies me. Father, thank you for, we just say that, I will. I will. I make a decision to do what you've asked me to do where I haven't wanted to. Thank you that you're giving me the grace to do and to will according to your pleasure. I will to do your word. In Jesus' name. If you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you're hearing this message and you know that you got to give in your heart, you, you know you need to make a decision to give your life to Jesus. You can do that today. You can, if you will. The Bible says that Jesus came as the Son of God to pay the price for your and my sins. And if we would believe in our heart and confess him with our mouth as Lord, we would be saved. And so if that's you today, I want to lead you in that prayer. If you've never met Jesus or you're giving your life, why don't you lift your hand real, real high and strong. You know that you're, the Lord's calling you to give right with him right now. Maybe you've, given, maybe you've uh, made that decision before, but you're, uh, you know that the Lord's saying, I, you, your will has been contrary to my will, and you heard this message, and you know you need to make that. Just lift your hand boldly. 
right where you're at. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And just say this. Father, today, I surrender my life. I surrender my will to you. I give you all of me because you gave your son for me. I believe that he died on the cross, that he rose again, and that he is Lord. And today, I say, you are Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We're going to move into baptism uh, this morning. So this is really pumped, exciting time. Oh, Pastor Austin, will you come? Special time. Oh, thanks, Bob. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is a really exciting time because this is a, this is a time of decision. This is a time of uh, declaration. It's a time where of rejoicing. You can grab a chair. And if you're coming up, come on up. I'll, I'll, Austin, you know this better than me. Um, and we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes? That's what and I know. let me give you what baptism is. It's the death, burial, and resurrection. So we're talking about dying to ourselves. I think this is one of the greatest things you can do to overcome. One of the greatest things we can do to overcome the flesh. You know, if you're having problems, maybe with uh, overcoming your flesh or having problems, uh, man, I'll tell you, there's something about making a declaration before people, the death, burial, and resurrection, identif identification, even with this body right here uh, under his lordship. So we die, we're buried underwater, and we're raised in newness of life. All right, Pastor Austin, let's get it rolling. I'm taking my mic off. First up, we have Matthew. All right, so on each one of these, Pastor Snake's going to talk to them and just declare, have them declare that they've received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So that's a little intimate moment here that we'll have in each one of these, okay? Next up, we have Ellie. Next up, we have Zach. Miss Ava.
Jackson is ready. You know, a child, there's no junior Holy Spirit. And so when a child says, I want to come to Jesus, just like the Father or Jesus told the disciples, don't ever hinder, don't ever hinder them from coming. Amen? This is special. Amen. Next up, we have Jackson. Jake. We got Nick. Listen. We have Sophie. We have Daniel.
Next we have Allie. We have a few left here that have signed up, but we want to extend an invite. If you haven't signed up and just feel that tug on your heart, it is not too late to make that decision and go public with your decision to follow Christ. All right, so we have extra shirts for you. We have towels. Don't let that be a reason you don't come today. Uh, so we want to extend that invite to you now. If, if that's you and you feel that tug, please come up and let's get baptized today. Next up, then Miss Vanessa. you Jesus man that's it glory to God I'm telling you I want to do this at the creek sometime anyway thank you Jesus let's stand on our feet we're gonna go oh we have one more Miss Ellen wants to be baptized come on
Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Let's get on our feet. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory. We thank you that there is no end to our story. You're just a redeemer. You're a redeemer. You're a restorer. Father, we just give you our hearts today. We give you our will. We say yes. Thank you for drawing us and continuing to draw us. Father, thank you that we walked and ran away, that you continue looking for us. Thank you that you left 99 to find us one. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you for your love, your favor, and your mercy. We respond. We love you. Father, we call this church blessed as they go, coming and going, because of what you did in Christ. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. God bless you as you go. Enjoy your Sunday and your family.